Hey, what is up guys? Evan Aldo here. Wanted to give you a, an update on Bitcoin and Ethereum today. Uh, quick and concise, hopefully. So first thing I want to show you guys, this is interesting. So we have a yellow X on the 10 day on regular candles appearing. Not appearing in Hike and Ashy candles yet. However, it definitely can in the seven days before this uh, candle confirms. Now, last time we had this was not since 2015. So it was the accumulation phase after the capitulation here. Now, this would maybe give you a little bit of the case where we have already bottomed out, you know, given kind of how this looks. I mean, if this plays out like this, you got a 20% drop downward. There is the possibility though, yellow X's typically are more bearish. There is a pretty big possibility that that could bring us down, you know, a good amount here. It could, you know, we're due for one of these to play out more than just a 20% correction. I mean, if it does bring us you know, down 20%, let's see where that would bring us to for the short term. 20% would be right around 16K, okay. Um, which kind of scary how we're not even 20%, you know, you would think that would be much higher, but yeah, we're getting to those points. We're getting low here. Um, so yeah, moving on to like the eight day, you know, this is, printing a, a yellow X. This I don't believe has ever appeared before. Um, this is the first time ever. So I would, you know, assume it is going to be bearish until proven otherwise, um, just based on how everything's looking. S&P 500, we'll talk about that at the end. That's looking probably as bad as it can be looking, especially on the weekly right now. Um, so yeah, this is confirmed on the weekly yellow X. So yeah, and if you look kind of historically where money flow needed to be to bottom out, both times here, I believe, lower, lower than where we were right now in red money flow. So we're due for money flow to come lower to bottom out. That's why I think we could come down farther. I mean, I'm kind of leaning in the ballpark around the 400 weekly moving average. If I had to, you know, make an educated guess here where we're going to bottom out, out at 400 weekly moving average. Let's make that appear, you know, right around 13K. And that's, you know, a big major area. That would fit most of your, you know, bubble psychology charts. We're in the, you know, denial phase here. Now capitulation happens pretty soon. Then anger, depression over here as we, you know, probably hit the bottom at 13K. Could happen this month. Definitely could happen. Or September, excuse me. Could happen in September. We're still in August, technically. So, yeah. Moving on to some of the, you know, lower time frames here, like the three-day. Pretty neutral. You know, you've got your VWAP kind of starting to come up a little bit. Um, on your two day view up is curving up. That's probably a tiny bit more bearish, but I wouldn't even, I would just be more neutral the way I would interpret this daily. You confirmed a deep anchor wave. Um, I think this may just roll around, give us a red dot. And then after possibly that could mark your bottom. If you capitulate pretty soon or get down to one of these levels, 17 K 16 K 13 K when you get a daily, you know, bullish div that can mark your uh, market cycle bottom hundred percent. So that's what you were looking at there. And, you know, we're in kind of a new um, wedge right here. I mean, we broke out of this ascending wedge. Our technical target is around 19.2. Um, didn't quite hit that just yet. Now we're in a new, um, what appears to be maybe an ascending wedge we're entering right now. Um, and you know, yellow X in the eight hours didn't really play out yet. Um, there's definitely a possibility too, if you look at that, that we could just bounce around this wedge for a good amount of time, maybe the next five, six days, just bounce around here, not much happens and then break downward possibly, you know, or maybe even upward. Ascending wedges are typically um, more bearish though. I mean, if it plays out like this one, you're gonna be range bound for a couple more days, maybe up to September 3rd, and then you would, you know, come down like this percentage. Now, where would this bring us if it's like this? You know, 10% downward, maybe you break out over here, 10% downward, that's 18.5. I'm not seeing a spiral line there. Or you got 18.2, so that area is kind of big. Um, in terms of the short term, I'm short on ETH and um, Bitcoin on two separate accounts, so four total trades there. Um, took an ETH short this morning, locked in profits, still in a Bitcoin short from before, um, kind of just becoming swing trades here, so that's kind of how I'm navigating it right now. Still have an AVAX swing short open for a while now. And as you can see, you know, short term, we're kind of just bouncing off of here, middle area, so just staying range bound for now. Um, if you look at, you know, these time frames, these like lower time frames, 15 minute bullish divs happening. So that's bringing us up a little bit. Maybe a scalp along over there would have worked out, but possibly the next stop would be the bottom of this range here. This high volume note up here, this area, obviously gonna be big for shorts. 
down here is going to be big for scalp lungs. Moving on to Ethereum here. So Ethereum is obviously, you know, same ballpark as Bitcoin. Would be more bearish just, you know, because ETH, ETH Bitcoin valuation looks pretty bearish right now. I would say that when we come down, you know, ETH, ETH is a more volatile version of Bitcoin. It's going to have more volatility. It's going to come down more. You know, red dot in your weekly here, four days to confirm. Um, these could bring you down quite a bit. It could be like this one. Maybe it could turn into a yellow X. Who knows? But yeah. Same deal, you know, over here. You got a technical target down here. I think we will eventually test this area. Just a matter of time. That may happen once we break out of this wedge here. If September is the blood path that I think it could be, we break out of this new wedge over here, which let's look at that wedge right now. Um, it would have been actually a really nice um, scalp along off of the bottom of it pretty recently. But if you look at kind of your, your five hour right there, red dot. Um, on Bitcoin, the five hour, I believe, is printing. Um, not printing a red a blood diamond right now, but it's going back and forth between blood diamond and red dot. Um, 35 minutes to confirm. It's probably just going to confirm as a red dot. I don't think it's going to confirm as a blood diamond. I have a feeling you're going to be in this range for some time. Um, so, yeah. Right here, you know, what we saw on our 15 minute. Look at that bullish div right here. See the bounce off of there, then the bullish div. See that green dot, and then bam, that one took you up. You're hitting a local fib level right now. That could be it. That would be a good place to lock in profits if you took that uh, long off of that level. But these uh, trend lines are pretty good. And I do think, you know, some of you may be bored with this, but I do think you may be range bound before breaking up or breaking down. Now, if we look at some, you know, technical targets out of this ascending wedge, it would probably be, it would give you something like this as a technical target. You know, whenever you may if you come up to here and break out, it would be the spiral line 460 again same area but i mean to make a double bottom pattern here and continue boring and come back up i think you're gonna have to break downward so i think once we break through this it's going to come down a lot more and then you also have you know what could play out once we break out of this wedge your blood diamond under six day which historically look at that i mean it's been really bad you know it's, it's brought you down a lot if it's like and even even this one over here you know right to this point i mean I know some people have talked about like worst case scenarios like 87% um, downward and not saying this is going to happen, it's probably a really Armageddon like worst, worst case scenario, but 87% downward would be wild guys, wild. That would be like, yeah, 200 and then Bitcoin goes to 3,500. That's Gareth Solway's worst case scenario thing, which unlikely, but it could be possible could be possible. I mean, we look at the dot com bubble, we look at what happened. And we also look at our buddy S&P 500 right here, coming into the gray. I mean, if you look historically, especially on these EMAs, little trigger wave on the weekly, very, you know, money flow coming out, trigger wave confirms in two days. You know, it's hard to get more bearish than this. EMAs, you know, you'd argue whenever this comes back into the bright would be the time to get back in, I guess. Um, it looks like we're going to be, you know, recession, you know, something like 08, something like 01, you know, something of this nature where, you know, just stay on the sidelines, not financial advice, but I'm just staying on the sidelines until it looks either we come down a ton or it looks like we're curving back and get back into the bright EMAs on the weekly because that has been just such a good indicator of when we turn more bullish again. So that's what I'm looking at right now, you know, just sticking with the shorts for now. Um, missed the scalp long on ETH, but um, you know, what are you going to do? You can't win them all. Just chilling, enjoying kind of the end of the summer here. I mean, in Florida, it's always summer, but pretty much always summer. But yeah, it went by quick. We're into September now. Um, life goes on. All right, guys, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Have a good one. Goodbye.